right, following my Meet the Geek post, a number of people asked to see my medieval stuff, and so this is kind of an example of that. I'm doing a commission for a brass cloak clasp that will involve a bit of chainmail, two brass discs with some etching on it, with pins soldered onto the back. Um, I've done one of these before, which was a learning experience. I'd never soldered brass before, so I looked it up on the internet, and now I know how to do that. Um, this one's going to be a little more complicated because this one they want to have some fancy etching done on the discs uh, in the form of bird wings, which I've never done any brass etching before, so uh, yesterday I uh, experimented with that, uh, and uh, I think I can do that now, so we're going to give that a try. The chain is made out of uh, 1 16th inch brass, 16 gauge brass, that I bought at Hobby Town. And I've got a jig that allows me to take a brass rod and wrap it around into a coil, basically a spring. And then I use a Dremel to cut it, and then you knit it together into a chain. Into this fancy chain pattern. Unfortunately, the first one that I wrapped, I wrapped the wrong size. Hopefully I can unwrap this and rewrap it. If not, I'm going to have to go buy some more because this is just a little bit too short for what I want, I think. Might be about the right size, but we're going to do a little extra just in case. And then I take some slightly larger brass and bend it into a safety pin, essentially. And it'll get, I need to still sharpen this one, but then the metal disc gets soldered onto the back here. And that's pretty much all there is to it. One of a, on one side it'll actually just be directly attached to the chain, on the other side it'll have a little hook. So you button, or uh, you pin the discs into either side of your cloak and then it hooks in. So that's what's going to be going on. Um, I need to go acquire the patterns for what I'm going to be etching on. Um, I also may have to mount a tool that I have not yet mounted, my, uh, my metal shears, because this is actually fairly thick brass, really. Uh, and I need it to be able to cut it, and then I will grind it into a wheel, and then I will dish it slightly, and then I will etch it. Um, I'm not entirely sure whether I should etch it before or after. There will be some light planishing involved, and I don't know if that will completely mar up my etching. I kind of suspect it will, so I think I'm going to need to shape it first and then etch it, which means I'm going to be etching on a curved surface, which is going to be a pain in the butt. But we're going to learn. So, all right, on with the project. All right, rather than actually properly mount my shears, I have just used a clamp to attach it to my desk because I haven't been using it enough to actually bother to mount it properly. So we're just going to cut off a section. That's the part that I was practicing etching on, so it's all buggered up. And it occurs to me that before I go any farther, I actually need to mark out what I'm going to cut. So, All right, I've marked on the brass the little discs that I'm going to be cutting out, and with the shears that I've just clamped to the table for now. I'm just going to be cutting the very basic shape out of the plate. And then... Now for the next one. Nothing particular interesting or complicated here, just going along the edge with a file. Clearing off all of the burrs from the grinder. Obviously we want the edge to be as smooth as possible since this is going to be worn on a cloak and we don't want it cutting the fabric. So we're going to Hit the edge with a little bit of sandpaper now. All right, this is the dishing stump. As the name would suggest, it's a stump that's had a number of dishes carved into the top of it that are used for shaping metal. So these are used for like elbow pads or elbow cops on suits of armor, knee cops. Uh, this one is shaped for the uh, calf. And then there's a very small one that are used for things like this. What we're going to do is take a large hammer and 
gently. So we have a fairly uniform dish formed. Not trying to go particularly deep. Just want to make sure we get it evenly all the way around the edges. We will later clean up all of the... I will later go through and clean up all of the little dents using a technique called planishing. Lovely. And now the other one. Alright, I've reached the point of doing the etching. So, uh, I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but I have drawn the pattern that they want, which was this little wing. And I'm going to attempt to uh, etch it using my Dremel. And we will see how that works out for us. I'm going to start with a really fine point just so I can draw the lines and then I will probably go back over it with something a little bit thicker. And see how that works out for us. Alright, I have finished engraving both discs and I have made the two pins that will be getting soldered onto the back. So that's what I will be covering now, is how to solder brass to other brass. The final step will simply be making the little hook that goes into one side and attaching the chain to the other. So, first thing we need to figure out is exactly how we want the pins on here. And I think that would be how I am going to do it. Now, what we need, ooh, some of this messy flux that we will put where we want the solder. I'm going to use a vice grip to hold it upright, right where we want it. We need a section of solder, the length of the pin, put right there, right where we want it to go, and then if all goes well, as soon as it hits its melting point, it will suck right into where we want it, because flux is magical that way. One down, set it aside to cool. All right, once the solder cooled, it was simply a matter of on one side attaching the uh, chain into the back end of the safety pin that's uh, soldered onto the back. On the other side of the chain, making this little hook that then hooks into the other side and locks in place. And there you have it one engraved uh, brass cloak chain clasp. Not exactly sure what you would call this, but uh, I think it came out quite pretty. The uh, engraving is not the most beautiful work I've ever done, but it definitely came out uh, uniform and I didn't uh, screw it up anywhere, so I am pleased with it. Hopefully the customer is as well. So there you have it, some of the medieval stuff that I do. This definitely qualifies. Uh, you could also make chainmail armor this way. It just takes a whole lot more rings. So, there you have it. I'm going to go ahead and post this just because people ask about my medieval stuff and my channel does say it uh, covers my broad range of nerdery, not just my nerf things. So, there you have it. This sort of thing can be commissioned from a friend of mine, um, my partner, who makes uh, medieval garb. Her Etsy page is Seamstress at Arms. I will put a link in there. That's where this is being sold through as opposed to my own Etsy page, which I am going to keep for Nerf. So there you have it. Take a look at her stuff. If you're into medieval things, she makes absolutely beautiful garb uh, at a fairly reasonable price. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.